Welcome to the Mosquito Steve Radio Show on Talk Radio 1190. It's more than just mosquito talk. Mosquito Steve will talk about natural products, organics, good business practices, and more. And now, here's your host, Mosquito Steve. Howdy, 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 everybody. Welcome to the Mosquito Steve Show. Um, sorry, we're doing some juggling in here. So I want to thank my, uh, my uh, producer, Will. Is that, are you a producer or what are you? What are you, Will? Technically, yes. Technically, he's my technical producer then. <laughs> so welcome to this is uh, show number four. Very, very excited. We're going to um, let you guys call in and ask us questions here in just a little bit. Uh, but we've got a couple of guests, so I want to introduce them and talk a little bit about what's going on this week. Uh, the number to call in if you are writing things down right now is 214-817-787-1190, 214-787-1190, or 817-787-1190. And so um, I've got great guests today. I have Michael Bosco from Safe Haven Pests. Howdy. I have, no, howdy's my line. Oh, Hello. <laughs> and I've got Dave Russell, the mosquito detective. Good afternoon. It's, it is afternoon. He finally got it right. It's, it's afternoon. And we've got Mason. Mason, say hi. Did y'all hear that? Did y'all get that? So Mason's here, too. He's going um, to join us in a little bit. He's also an engineer, and um, he's eight years old, but he's uh, uh, the top engineer at this station. And uh, I'm just kidding. I love this station. So let's talk a little bit about what's going on with mosquitoes this week. Um, you know, we like talking about mosquitoes, and today's going to be a very mosquito-centric and pest control-centric uh, show. A lot of times we talk about other things like mental health and stuff like that. But um, I, first of all, um, I want to um, I want to say happy birthday to Michael Bosco, whose well, birthday was yesterday. You. It was, yes. Yeah. What are you, 59? I don't know. I have to do the math. And... Uh, <laughs> Uh, it's somewhere around 42. Golly. Oh, my God. If I could be 42 again, those were such great years, the 40s. And I thought they were old at the time. <laughs> but let me tell you, 50s, oh, my God, the 50s, really, they're horrible. I'm struggling with the 50s. <laughs> so uh, let's talk about what's going on with Zika and West Nile. Okay, Zika, not much is new this week. Um, you know, we talked a little bit about what was going on with the Olympics last week. Uh, we do have our very first case of human West Nile virus um, in North Texas, and that was in Irving this week. And so, and this is the uh, neuroinvasive version. So they have uh, this is somebody that's very sick with uh, the West Nile virus. I've been saying since day one that the West Nile virus is what we need to protect ourselves from, not Zika. I'm not as concerned about Zika, not because it's not a serious and couldn't be a serious um, epidemic, but mainly because for most people, they don't show the symptoms. If they do, it's flu-like. It's only really pregnant women uh, that need to be concerned with it. And even still, you know, it's it's really, it, it only takes a week to get out of your system. So if you are planning on getting pregnant and you get it, it's okay after about a week, and you can never get it again. So that's uh, that's the thing about Zika. West Nile virus, on the other hand, um, still most people don't show the symptoms of West Nile virus, and so uh, but but the ones that do, sometimes it can get really really serious, and obviously you know um, people have died from it. And so um, our prayers go out to the guy in Irving who has West Nile virus. While we're on that topic, my prayers and thoughts, our prayers and thoughts go out to uh, the police officers in Dallas. And, um, you know, what a what a situation we had here this week. You know what? I know this. I know everybody's probably really tired of, I mean, they're probably inundated with it. And I'm sure that my point of view on this thing is not important to anybody. So I just want to say uh, um, that, you know, I am... Uh, uh, my thoughts and prayers are going out for those people and the families left behind by the uh, slain officers. So, anyway, so that's really it. The big news this week for mosquitoes is West Nile virus. It's getting hot out there. Uh, have y'all noticed that it's heating up a little bit? Um, <laughs> it is. No question about it. So, um, so I want to ask y'all, uh, because I know that uh, for me, I've been, I'm in this business for a really long time, and it seems like every... Uh, it seems like every July and August, the business slows down significantly in Dallas. Now, I'm thinking it's because it's so hot, nobody wants to go outside. 
Um, but it could be there could be other factors and uh, that I don't know about. Maybe it's because all the Highland Park people go to Colorado or Santa Fe. I think there's a lot of vacationing going on. I think that people got to get caught up, right, with normal life and sometimes getting their. Boy, he opened a <laughs> boy. You opened a big one there. Yeah, not all of us can take a vacation every other week like Michael does. He uh, really does every week. Where have you not traveled to uh, that you want to go to? I haven't been to Montana. I need to do that. But really? we are going to Washington, so we'll be getting up there. Washington's beautiful. I love Washington. One of my favorite places. So, uh, but I I know this. I know up in uh, um, when uh, Wisconsin, Minnesota, up north, uh, July and August. That's when their big month is. That's when they're out. And so, uh, so if anybody's listening to us up there, you know, our products work up there just like they do down here. So, um, you know, uh, give us a call. Let us know uh, what's going on with you. Listen, by the way, so if you ever want to get in touch with me, the best way to do it is by email, steve at mosquitosteve.com. Now, you have to be able to spell mosquito right. I will tell you, my debit card from the bank, um, they actually spelled it with M-E, like mesquite. Me. <laughs> yeah, the mesquito, um, which is baffling to me but anyways uh that's what my debit card says on is mosquito um so you have to know how to spell mosquito that's but if Mexican you can mosquito <laughs> you better be careful with that you better be I'm really just, careful where, yeah. you know mexican lives matter <laughs> i'm sorry that's right they're, they're going down all right so yeah so you can see the kind of wackiness huh? i wish we had the clown horn or something dog <laughs> all right so here's the deal what was i what was i saying you got me off bases here was uh, uh where was i well, you no. were trying to let people know how to get a hold of you. There you and go. They do that's, need to spell it correctly. That's right. Spell it correctly, but I didn't say what to spell, did I? So Steve at MosquitoSteve.com. Steve at MosquitoSteve.com. If you'll send me an email, I'd be glad to answer your questions. Or you can call in here in a little bit and ask me. Um, you can always call the office, 214-520-0041, 214-520-0041. Okay, so that's it. So now no more of that. We've got all that out of the way. So I want to talk about uh, what's going on. So, um, so anyway, so I've got, I'm going to start with Michael Bosco because, um, uh, Michael was, I guess the first service provider that I started working with, uh, last year and, um, his family has been in the business for a long time, but, but I'll tell you, he's, uh, he does, uh, he does most of the mosquito, um, treatments over in Dallas. Um, he's my biggest service provider over here. He goes through a whole lot of the stuff and, and so uh, he is an official Mosquito Steve authorized dealer. And uh, and then Dave, Dave handles Fort Worth and surrounding areas. And where else do you serve over there? Down all the way to Denton, Autumn, Get out. Oh, get, get close How's to my kiss that, that better there we go. he had his cough button on no or, it, oh it, I the know. Yeah, on yeah. button wasn't on while ago. oh yeah he turned himself off get up right next to it okay how's that you turned me off yes no you yes that's yeah good. so i'm tarrant county uh mainly fort worth but also hurst Jules, bedford arlington a little bit of keller um i've gone all the way to denton argyle i've got a few customers up there argyle what's an argyle it's just south of Denton is what's in our <laughs> All right, so we're going to get to Dave in just a minute. I want to start off with the birthday boy, though, um, our little 42-year-old service provider over here. So, uh, and, and, and it's Michael's son that's here, Mason. Uh, say hi again, Mason. Hi. See, that's a, that's a, we're trying to get him to get some head. He's being a little shy and, today. Yeah, and yeah. participate. Um, but uh, so, Michael, I know you knew you grew up in the business, I did. Um, and uh, so your company was formerly named Riddall. Was it started by your dad or your grandfather? My great Tell uncle started it in 1955. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. So I, I don't, why was I thinking of your grandfather? So your father went in so partners with So once dad your, got out of the service, he uh, started, once they moved back to Dallas, then uh, in the late 70s, he started working at Riddall. And shortly thereafter, purchased Riddall. And so basically, I grew up with the pest control business out of the house. You know, we were kind of a one-man operation back then. And um, so literally the day I turned 16, I went and took my driver's test and then went and ran a route. So, yeah, I've been doing it for a long time. Wow. When I was 12, I think I was spraying 
underneath homes with some of the nastier stuff. Yeah, that's what I want to get to. That's that's what interests me. It I explains want to know. why I have some of the strange that's right. habits and well, that ticks. ticks that yeah, tick. That right. you know, it's, it's always just kind of weird. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> So, um, yeah, so when did, because I noticed on, I, I looked at the Riddle site, because mm-hmm. I didn't even know it was still up, which I'm it surprised is. it's still up. Yeah. So, um, so I went and looked on that site, and it talks about organics and stuff like that. So when did, um, well, we're, actually, we're going to be taking a break here soon. So I want to ask you when we get back more about um, when you guys transitioned into organics okay. and stuff like that. But I do have to ask you, so what is the most dangerous, scariest stuff that you ever sprayed and Florida. that you guys use? What? Floridane. It's a chlorinated hydrocarbon, right? It's one of the same line of products that, like, DDT was. Uh, oh, wow. So it built up in fat reserves and bioaccumulated. There you go. The 25 cent for the word of the day. Huh. So I would be dead with all the fat cells I've got. Or you could be... have just absorbed a lot more. I'm not <laughs> sure which. <laughs> so, all right. Well, thank God I didn't have to be around that stuff. Yeah, I think— um, uh, you know, I, I have to tell you, you know, there's uh, since in the 70s, we ran behind the DDT trucks and stuff like that. So and it didn't seem to be a problem. Uh, obviously, we know it's a problem today. Um, you know, pesticide, we have no idea what what we've done to this land and the water with all the pesticides we sprayed. So um, so I know that you guys are going over or safe haven is organic. We want to talk a little bit more about that. So here on the other side of the break, we'll, we'll address that and then we'll get more uh, with the mosquito detective and all that kind of stuff. And uh, we're going to be right back after these commercials. So you guys stay tuned. Let's get back to the Mosquito Steve show with your host, Steve Moore. Stevie and the Jets here. <laughs> Welcome back to the Mosquito Steve Show. Well, thank y'all. Listen to that crowd. Listen to that <laughs> roaring crowd. So uh, I have to tell you guys, I have to thank Will and Sheldon. Oh, my gosh, you guys. It's so great to have some of my music here. So um, this is so I grew up in the um, 60s and 70s. And so I think the 70s are the best decade for music ever. And I talked to people that were a little younger than me that like to argue that the 80s were the best decade for music. But you guys, come on. I mean, really? I mean, that's you look at all the guys we're losing now, David Bowie, people like that. I mean, this is it. just it's amazing music. So uh, so that really takes me back. Thank you all for doing that. I really appreciate it. So um, I want to tell you all real quick before we get back to Michael, you know, I had a, a call, uh, Get the, and I get this often, um, they talk about some guy, cause here's the deal. If a guy's got a pickup truck, he's in the mosquito business these days. I mean, that's all it takes. Um, they go out there and they're spraying God knows what they're installing misting systems. They can buy those anywhere. So, so what happens is these guys jump in the business and they don't have any experience and they don't know what they're talking about. And they hear where they get their information is from the chemical company. So they're saying things like we use a botanical insecticide and, uh, you know, and then they say things like it's safe. And the truth is, so if ask them if they spray pyrethrins or permethrin, if they spray either one of those, they are, are not safe and they're actually not allowed to say the word safe with it. So it's very important that you ask these people questions because a lot of these guys, I mean, they have no they, they don't know what they're doing. And so uh, you don't want them spraying something horrible in your yard like Michael used to do when he was a kid. And yes. so <laughs> kids don't do that. Yes. Yeah. Do not try this at home. So, um, all right. So you used to spray, used to kill, um, everything. Red all. We were red all. Yeah. We, we did it red, all. Red all. You got rid of everything. And, and so what, what did you use like for rats and, and, uh, blood thinners and, there, which it's actually the same products that we're using today. They're basically medical grade blood thinners in, in a rat based bait. Okay, okay. And they consume enough, and they start to bleed internally. As awesome as that sounds. Wow. It's very effective. Huh. Is that organic? That is not organic. Oh, okay. Well, okay. actually, you no. Know, nah, I mean, organic doesn't have a carbon molecule with it. Well, but it's so, but in a case like that, you've got it inside a, a bait trap. Yeah, they're, they're, they're what they call tier one level security in the sense that they require a special key kids can't get to it dogs can't chew through it yeah and okay. and they're pinned in there with rods so you can't you can't shake them out 
Okay. All right. That's good. See, I, here's what I always worry about. This is this is so because my dad will put bait out and stuff like that, and and I'm always afraid that the dog is going to find one of those rats mm-hmm. that just ingested one of those poisons, and the dog's going to eat the rat, and thereby the dog would get the poison. So yes. how does that work? Well, if there is enough non-digested bait in the rat, which probably isn't, then you could have some uh, symptoms, but it would not be a volume that would cause the dog any great harm. And the good news actually is all, vitamin K is the antidote for those products. So all it takes is a shot huh. uh, to solve that because it's wow. it, they're nothing more than blood thinner. So you just – anyway, so it, it's actually pretty – we have never, ever seen a situation where that's been a problem for a pet. Now, there has been concerns of like birds of prey because now you're talking about a much smaller animal eating maybe enough bait that could cause some harm. So those are situations where there might be some concern, but – a pet? No, there really isn't. Unless a dog actually gets into the bait. We've seen that where homeowners put out bait. They don't have the stations. Right, right. And now you've got some potential poisoning concerns. Wow. Um, I don't like rats. I got to tell you, that's one of my, that's one of those things. When I was out counting mosquitoes in the middle of the night and the rats were jumping around in the, the, bamboo and stuff like that that scared me to, to day I, I, it was two o'clock in the morning and i'm hearing these rats it's just me and the rats and the mosquitoes oh the fun times i've had let me tell you so um so tell me about okay and you wonder r- why it's hard to find good people yeah, yeah. Or, or girlfriends that's <laughs> it yeah that's it my thing i know that's usually what it comes down to um so let me ask you this so when did you guys decide and was this your your dad and your mom and you as a family that decided you wanted to go more organic or what happened there? no uh so we we did in 91 92 uh by the time i was graduated from high school decided that that was something that what we high school to do uh that would be lake highlands high school hey, the great lake highlands we salute sorry. you there we go <laughs> um it, it's good to see a good red red white and black guy kid around right <laughs> um so where are we at? We're uh, talking about the so yeah, when we transition. decided to go organic. Um, actually, I was a big Howard Garrett listener and uh, um, definitely thought, well, one, I wanted to use less products. I wanted to be around less dangerous products. And uh, so I thought, you know, for my own personal interest, but I became very interested in organic landscaping. So I shifted to doing a lot of organic but uh, in the lawns as well as in the pest side of things, structural pests. So that was the decision. My dad had no interest in it. I provided that service, and uh, but he eventually came on board and was doing some of it. But then anybody that came on board afterwards, we trained up to do organic so uh, or green. We call it green services today, really, low impact. Yeah. So why why would everybody not just automatically switch over? I mean, it's, it seems like, look, it's why doesn't everybody just, well, why are there still people using toxic poisons out there? Well, I get it. You, it's like the, the toolbox. You you need a lot of different tools. And I'll tell you, there's there are situations where you need to do some very prescription applications uh, for some pest problems. Uh, a lot of things, uh, we have a lot of great baits, and those baits may or may not have necessarily natural products in them, but they're extremely low volumes of product being applied at very precise locations. So it's um, what we go off of is the public schools uh, green listed products. We do three different school districts uh, here in the Metroplex and there's a, a regulated green list product and that's what we consider our low impact services. Okay so and the deal is, is you're, you're low impact because you're really not affecting the environment. I mean, we're not talking about something you're spraying over all the grounds or, or where it's going to run off into right. the, the water crevice, table like or anything. Like that. drenching, yeah. particular ant mound, very small uh, locations. Yeah. yeah. Not yeah. Broad. Okay. Okay. That's cool. Well, in, in part of the thing, so, so Michael, um, I know on the mosquito stuff, you're using Mosquito Steve and... Um, you've used a lot of products yep, uh, before yeah. Mosquito Steve. So tell me a little bit about that journey. Why are you using Mosquito Steve? So we used, you pretty much name it. I don't know if you want to name all those products, but there was probably a half dozen 
uh, products that we had used over the in the over the years uh, before we came across Mosquito Steve. Uh, either one, they weren't all that effective, or two, they were harsh on the applicator. A lot of them will have some really harsh, volatile um, essential oils that burn your eyes, burn your skin, uh, aren't pleasant to be around. Right? And it's kind of hard to convince anybody to continue to use those or want to use those on you know day in and day out. Um, or in the misting systems, they were uh, very damaging on a lot of the components within the pumps or the seals or the nozzles, or they would clog nozzles. And then, so they would just, they had all kinds of problems. Um, so when we came across your product, you know, we baby stepped into it. Cause again, it's another one of those products that's unknown until yep. you try it and feel, get out there and actually use it. But obviously first thing we found out was it was pleasant. We enjoyed the, the smell, the fragrance was great. Uh, it didn't. It was nice to apply. It didn't burn your eyes. It didn't burn your skin. We didn't see any plant burning, which is a real positive. Uh, no phytotoxicity there. And then what we discovered over the long run was it worked. It provided the results that we were hoping for and what their clients expected. Cool. I like to hear that. So, Dave, don't worry. We're going to get to you. I know Dave's over here. Dave, know, wake up. Wake my, up, Dave. My phone's blowing up. People are saying, I want to hear the mosquito detective. Yeah, Dave's not here. <laughs> That's right. So, okay, you guys, feel free to call in on this uh, next segment coming up here in a little bit. We will be talking to Dave a little more. We still got a lot to talk to Michael about. Um, uh, so I know because, I, I mean, he really literally grew up in the business. And so, um, so I really want to hear about uh, more from him. So you're not a degreed entomologist. What is your degree? My degree in? is in plant and soil science with a minor in biology. So I had to have, I came very close to getting my entomology minor, but I did get my associate certified entomologist. So you actually have to be a four-year degreed entomologist to be, to get your board certified entomology. Okay. okay. So entomology, that's the one that is, is, does work with the urinary tract and stuff like that. Is that the no, <laughs> endocrine? No, yeah, no, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that's like that. endoc endocrinologist. Endocrinologist. That's what that is. Yeah. Entomologist, is somebody that, that works with insects. Is I'm just kidding. So, um, all right. So, what did you do with that degree? Because a lot of people don't know you actually now you're safe haven, but you spent a lot of years with um, with another company and founded it and built it. Yep. Mm -hmm. So once I graduated from college with my plant and soil science degree in 97, then I turned around and started Soils Alive, which was an organic fertilization company. In fact, the largest organic service provider in the state of Texas, really. I'll go ahead and brag about that. And then they ran, you ran them out of business and then, uh, uh, we no. became a very successful <laughs> operation. And in fact, so successful that I had people knocking on my door to purchase the uh, company. And, uh, you know, we went through that little thing called the drought. Yep. And that was a little worrisome. I didn't really want to be in a business that was completely governed by what the, what the rain schedule was and how full our lakes were. So I decided, uh, it might be a good, a good idea to take some chips off the table. Okay. So I like to watch them. They're, they start getting nervous. We got like 30 seconds to break. You can see Meg got up out of her seat. Of She's walking over, over to look. Yeah. Say, uh oh, uh oh, they're going to run over, aren't they? They're going to do it. Nope. I don't, I don't miss my breaks. Okay. Coming back with Michael Bosco from Safe Haven, Dave Russell from Mosquito Detective. We'll be right back. We're back to the Mosquito Steve Show on Talk Radio 1190. I can now, see here's your host, Steve Moore. Very well. Wow, I feel like I'm on NPR right now. Just being really quiet. Welcome back as we. Uh, oh my gosh, I just want to shut up and play that song. What a great song! Ah, the piano playing is incredible in it. Thank you guys again. Wow. Okay, so um, first of all, before we get started, I want to give a shout out to a guy named Dallas who is a big smart aleck um, listening in right now. Just like my <laughs> next guest, Dave Russell. The mosquito detective who, um, as far as smart dogs go, I mean, he's right up there at the top. And so um, so I have to ask you, first of all, because I know you went through some some consternation on trying to decide what name. Uh, why mosquito detective? Well, that's a good question. Um, of course, it's a I, good question. I asked it. I don't need you to tell me what, what kind of questions I'm asking. Be, besides being the smart <laughs> aleck, I, uh, 
I I considered Mosquito Monkey because I thought it was fun and and it rolled off the tongue. But then uh, I had my whole history of before I was doing this, I was a private investigator for 19 years. Wow. So I'd seen a lot of different things, and and, uh, my nickname as a private investigator was Double O Dave. So I thought um, (laughs) I could tie that in and parlay it into uh, another successful business. Okay, I know I give you a hard time about being cornball because um, it's it's really it's a trench coat. You know, when you're in the the tuxedo trying to look like uh, 007, that's that's okay. But the trench coat thing that's that's the one that that worries me. So, uh, but anyway, so how do you go from private eye to mosquito man? Well, um, I left the uh, private eye business. I sold my uh, PI company, and uh, I actually got a Avis and Budget car rental location for about six years and uh i met up with you right when i was getting tired of doing that and and uh heard one of your ads on the radio and uh, invited you out to come do a spray and uh, you said it was going to be about three weeks because you were so far behind (laughs) and 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 you kind of said under your breath uh i need to get someone over in tarrant county and i kind of looked down over my glasses and went really and i mentioned that to you and and uh, ever since then, we started talking more and more, and I learned more about the products, learned more about the company, and and uh, I was sold, and I jumped in feet first. So, and I know you you do more than just the arch rays and the misting, because you you go to we don't have a lot of retailers over in Fort Worth, so um, so a lot of times people don't want to order online; they want the product when they want it, they want it now. Um, but you, so you do sell some retail products and, and you're selling at farmer's market and stuff, right? What's yeah, the farmer's markets. I, I've tried a lot of different advertising avenues, uh, door hangers, trade shows. Um, and somebody suggested farmer's markets and I went to the Cowtown farmer's market and I had a really good showing. And then uh, someone said, try the Keller's farmer's market. And I went there and it was really good. And I think the tie-in is that the people at the farmer's market go there because they want organic, they want fresh, they want natural. And so it, it just makes sense that we're organic and we're natural, and um, it's been a big hit. Cool. So if you suspect that your spouse is cheating on you, um, call in right <laughs> now, and you can ask Dave to come over and bring you some mosquitoes. 214 or 817 787 Seven eight seven eleven ninety or eight one seven seven eight seven eleven ninety. What Michael Michael's trying to say something? He's no. I'm just it. wondering if Davis trained the mosquitoes to act as drones to do some detective wow. work. What a great idea! Yeah, they're actually undercover. So I send the mosquitoes in undercover so that people <laughs> call me to uh, install the product to actually motivate system. them. Yes. Speaking of undercover, you went out on a bed bug call this week. Right? Yes. And, I'm um, still itching and creeped. See, here's the thing. So I had to tell you all. So I do this service work, and I'll go down to these places and I, um, where they have bed bugs. And so I, I read to these guys and, and have meetings with them and stuff. But they have bed bugs there. We know they have bed bugs there. And I got to tell you, I for two or three days, every time I itch, I'm thinking I got bed bugs. It really. So what are the odds that I'm going to walk into a building Sit down with a guy, be there for an hour, and go home and bring bed bugs home with me. Is that is that logical, or do I need to actually sleep there, spend some time there? Where there's their some concern. Bed bugs are cryptic in the sense that they don't like to be seen. They're really um, more night. You know, they're uh, they tend to come out at night, uh, but that doesn't mean that they if they got a, a host nearby that they won't crawl up and get on your clothing or uh, and travel home with you. Most people bring them home, you know, from the hotels. It tends, or if they go stay with someone that has that happens to have them. That, and and it's the whole bringing them in your your stuff, you know, your your bag or your suitcase. So that tends that's the way they like to travel. Okay, so speaking of uh, bringing them home from the hotels, Dave. So what is the oddest, uh, most strangest uh, detective case you had? Do you, I mean, it was it was it mostly spouses worried about their their cheating husband or something? Or no, uh, I actually started out doing uh, undercover work, um, and I would go into a place of business and pose as an employee, and then I'd work there anywhere from three to six months and evaluate their productivity, their um, supervision, safety, 
and uh, theft and drug activity that was going on. And then I kind of transitioned into doing the uh, insurance and personal injury uh, side, people that were doing insurance fraud. And then I got into a little bit of the husband and wife stuff. So I saw, yeah, I saw a lot of, of things. Um, I had a, a, a client call me from uh, Tennessee one time and wanted me to follow his wife and said she was flying into DFW and thought she might be cheating on him. And so I waited at uh, the airport, and I had one of my, back in those days, it was a pager camera. So you wear it on your belt, and it looked like a pager, but it was a, a video camera. And uh, I get video of him at the uh, luggage carousel. And uh, no, actually, it was, a, it was a female, and she was meeting um, a guy here. And sure enough, he was at the luggage carrier, and I got video tape of him. Um, then I had to follow him to a hotel. And that's tough. If you think about when you are at the airport oh, and I'm wow. parked in a spot and I don't know where they are and I have to go to my spot and find them, get out of the airport and follow them, and I managed to make it all the way to the hotel. And one thing that you never do when uh, you have a client is you don't tell them where you are because sometimes they'll they'll want to come after the spouse. I know. I've a, seen cheaters. In, yeah, a, they... in a fit of rage, <laughs> so I wouldn't tell them. But um, he he wanted to confront the guy. So... I, I told him the hotel. I just didn't tell him which one. And he called the wife and said, hey, it's over. And she goes, what do you mean? He goes, I know where you are. And she goes, well, what do you mean? He goes, how did, how did I call you here? And he goes, let me talk to the guy. <laughs> wow. So it, was a, it was a tense situation. No, he got or, killed or anything? No. <clears throat> no but, well, that's good. Um, oh, one other one real quick. A lady had me follow her husband down to Florida, and sure enough, he was uh, cheating. He had a, a, a girlfriend 20 years younger than her or younger than him, and I followed him around, uh, got video of him, and then when whenever a case is done, I provide the client a copy of the videotape. And so she had the videotape before he came back from his, his uh, trip, and she told him, I have a movie for us to watch tonight. Oh my gosh. And so wow. when he sits down, she played the video th that I had of him cheating. How there. is that not more exciting than mosquitoes? Come on. Well, it's it's close. <laughs> There's a little more travel in that than the uh, yeah. mosquito business. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Okay, Michael, how are you going to beat that? I don't so, know. <laughs> so I have to tell you, my greatest fear, so um, speaking of hotels, see, I'm, I'm tying all this together. Um, my sister was in a hotel one time and got a spider bite on her eye. And, uh, and I have to say, one of my greatest fears, because I don't worry about, I don't like rats, but, but, and, but I'm not afraid of snakes. Spiders scare the daylights out of me because they can come bite you in the middle of the night, and the next day they've got to, like, take your arm off or something like that to protect you from getting poison all throughout your body. So spiders, kill or repel? What, what do we do? What, if you got spiders in your house, what do you do? Yeah. Yeah. Uh well, you kill them, you kill them, uh, you kill them as effectively as you can. Now, you know, spiders are not insects, right? They're arachnids. Uh, they're hard to kill, actually. They're very difficult pests to control because uh, they walk on their tippy toes. They don't have sticky pads on the bottom of their feet like uh, a lot of insects do. So they don't Cast. pick up insecticides. They don't pick up the residuals. Uh, and then they don't, uh, here's another 25 cent word, they don't prin themselves. They don't clean themselves. So they don't pick up. They don't ingest the residuals. So the short answer is they're very tough, right, like a cat would, right, uh, and as Steve is Sorry. licking himself. Yeah, this is not TV, is it? No, <laughs> it's no, okay. no, it doesn't Thank play God. out well, and I don't want to give the play-by-play -play here. <laughs> um, but the short answer is uh, you, gotta, you need to kill them. Um, and we use a lot of sticky boards and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, you know, there's a lot of – places in the Metroplex that have really high concentrations of uh, brown recluses. Yeah, Bower that's Mound, the one. Copper Canyon, oh. Argyle, those areas like that have some really large populations of uh, uh, black, uh, not black widows, but the uh, brown recluses. So what about black widows? Which one's worse? Well, um, Are black widows outdoor spiders and brown recluses indoors? Right. Bra uh, black widows tend to, they, black widows don't tend to move. They're nest makers. And brown recluses are hunters. So you see more brown recluses, and you don't tend to get a population explosion of 
black widows. But we have had some barns out in East Texas, uh, on the east side of town, uh, of, of uh, what is that lake over there? Um, uh, Ray, Hubbard? Ray, Ray Hubbard. Ray Hubbard. Ray Hubbard. Uh, it's okay. not like I've lived here my whole life. Uh, <laughs> that had every little corrugated spot in the barn was had black willow now. So we've seen some pretty wild infestations. Wow. Okay. So we're learning a lot here today. If you want to learn more, you just have to tune back into us. Uh, we're going to take our last break for today. Remember, uh, last week we had a bunch of call-ins. We don't have anybody calling in. I guess there were only three people in the whole world that need had questions last week. So please call in if you want to. Otherwise, uh, come on back and join us, and we'll have one more segment, and we'll be right back after the break. Is that it? There's no way to say welcome You're back. On. That's okay. Hi everybody. You can sit there and jam if you want. I am jamming. I'm sorry. <laughs> this was uh, by the way, somebody say welcome back to the Mosquito Steve show. I welcome forgot to back. push the button. <laughs> but welcome back to the Mosquito Steve show. <laughs> that's Will. That's Will. Will. Uh, that's all right. That's we we appreciate you, Will. Really do. Golly, it's great to hear some good music. Okay. So before we get into anything else, I have to tell you there's a topic I have to ask Michael about. Um, I don't know why I haven't asked him this before, but um, so uh, scorpions. I want to talk about scorpions. So when I visit my cousin in Big Spring, and uh, she's telling me these stories about these scorpions that hang from the ceiling, and like in the middle of the night, they will drop down on her head while she's sleeping. So obviously, I did not sleep. I couldn't sleep. It was <laughs> freaked me out. I cannot imagine. What did you scorpions do to this poor lady when this... y'all were younger? Maybe no, she's, she's just telling she's you older. Stories. She's older, and she's telling. No, I'm like, gosh. bed bugs will do that. Oh well, actually. she also she she also tells a story about ghosts in her house. And I'm like going. I'm still. I'm stuck I think on she the was scorpions. Trying to keep you from not I, coming back. I know that's and I haven't been back. I haven't. I I it's stay in a hotel effective. when I go because I think that the ho- scorpions aren't going to be in the hotel. But I know better. Probably going to get bed bugs from the hotel because I won't stay at her house with the scorpions. But so, so let me ask you. So, if if somebody called some here in Dallas said I got scorpions that hang from my ceiling and drop in my mouth while I'm sleeping, what would you do? We would treat it. <laughs> uh, we would. It's a multifaceted approach to controlling scorpions. Uh, we actually do have a fair amount of scorpions. Those same places that we were talking about the uh, brown recluses being up in the northwest part of the metroplex, the Flower Mound. You get into a little bit more of a rocky environment up there. That they got the iron ore soil up there, and there's a lot more. Um, just it's a better habitat for them. But anyway, there's a lot of homes up there that have scorpion problems. So huh. scorpions and brown recluses, yeah. you can't beat that. We don't have any scorpions at White Rock Lake, so I'm not going to worry right. about it. Okay, so I mean, before we forget, how do people get a hold of Safe Haven? What's the best way to get a hold of you guys? Uh, going to the website's great, safehavenpest.com. We, the, you can email us at info at safehavenpest.com, or our phone number is 214-340-6969. Okay, you have some bundles, and uh, this is what, when I'm telling people, a lot of times people call in and they're asking me, you know, well, who should I use? And uh, one of the things that that Safe Haven offers is you've got bundles that include all pest control. So tell us a little bit about your bundles. We do. We have bundles. uh, We have a ruby, sapphire, emerald, and diamonds. Uh, uh, The ruby plan is just a general pest. Our sapphire plan is general pest plus termite and rodent. And then the emerald plan is when we start throwing in mosquito yard sprays. Uh, So twice a month uh, yard sprays. Uh, included with all the previous things I just mentioned. And then our diamond plan is all the previous plus the misting system plus free misting refills. Wow. Okay, mm-hmm. cool. So to find out more about those, just get a hold of safehavenpest.com or call them at 214-340-6969. And so back over here to Dave. So um, so Dave, I know you've got some pricing specials on your website too. So you're just you're just mosquitoes, right? Mosquitoes, yes. flies. You, I know you do some flies and stuff, restaurant situations and things like that too. Correct. Right. I have uh, three specials, and my pricing goes with a small, medium, and large yard, and those are uh, ninety nine, one twenty nine, and one forty nine. And if you're not sure about your yard, just have me come out. I'll uh, come out and do an estimate for free. And then the first time I come out, 
I knock thirty dollars off of any of those, so you you get to get in and evaluate it for a little bit less before you sign on for regular sprays, which almost everyone does. Okay, so I know I know there's a, one of one of the other service providers. Chris, the mosquito man, got to say something about Chris. And, uh, he does like a prepaid, you know, for a couple of months you get you get a discount or something like that. Are you guys, are you doing something similar? Or? I, I, I have considered it. I haven't I haven't put it out there yet, but that's a good plan. A lot of people like the convenience and, and the savings of paying all at once, but I just don't have that out there yet. Okay. I love your website. I got to tell you, I really do. I, I like your testimonies. You actually have pictures of the clients there, so that is so cool. I believe it. I'm or not, afraid those, to ask people if they'll let me use their name, much less their image. Those are real testimonies too, real real pictures of them. They were really nice to I let me do that. that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, what are you going to do in the off season when there's no skis? Are you going to be a private detective again? Or I'm going to ski. Oh, uh, a little, little snow skiing. You and uh, Michael, am I the, the only one that doesn't travel here? Golly. Um, speaking of travel, to tell you I'm going to Africa in August. No, no. Well, we need to talk before you go. Yeah, uh, I'm bringing lots of repellent. Yeah, you need to take lots of you two know, ounces over there. And and uh, we're you know we're trying. So we're actually in talks with um, uh, the East African Chamber of Commerce, some of the people from there, uh, trying to get our products over there. It's a huge process. We're we have to get approved. We've been approved, so now we have to ship samples over. Then they have to test them and make sure that we're the products are actually are what they say they are. Uh, but, yeah, I'm I'm really hoping to get our products over in Africa. I really believe we can save about a quarter of a million lives a year, and I'm not kidding. Uh, but it's, you know, it takes takes money and a lot of effort, a lot more money than I have right now. And I'll tell you, Becky, my uh, sweetie, she took it to uh, Costa Rica. She takes a, 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 does a study abroad class there for TCU, and uh, that's all she used. She went through a, a four-ounce bottle and a two-ounce bottle, and the mosquitoes and the Biting flies and the noceum, the midges are crazy there, but she said she didn't have any problem with them. I hear that all the time. It's one of the greatest things about being in this business is when people tell me how well this stuff works. So it's, uh, it's, that's, I never can get enough of it. Please keep telling me how well it works. So, so no more private detective at all. You're done. No, you know, I, I tried to do it on the side when I had the uh, uh, car rental place um, just because it was so much fun and I, I did so much but uh, but when you keep up your license you know, license renewal fee and insurance and all that stuff to to just do a case or two here or there it's just not worth it yeah okay Michael I know that you are very very involved in the community I know you do um, you, you've been involved with some nonprofits um, you also are, you're an investor in the in a, he he also drinks a lot. I mean he he <laughs> <laughs> because I drink a lot. I had to invest. That's right. In he had to invest. Right. Yeah, he's like he figured if he was going to put his money in there, he might as well get something back on it, right? Right. So uh, so which what brewery is that? Uh, Oak Island's Brewery. So O H B. Okay, I noticed they've got. I just read. I can't remember. They got a uh, not. They got some kind of a uh, fundraiser coming up. Don't they? Uh, you I know, they're always it? doing fundraisers. They yep. did the uh, one for Dallas Dogger, uh, which you were involved with as well, right? And then they also did one for uh, the um, great Dallas Q, which is a big barbecue cook-off that they did. But huh. uh, it's hard to keep up with all of their uh, nonprofit work. And you got me involved in uh, working with K Trail 5K. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so we did that together, and uh, we still spray though. It's a, it's an amazing deal because we, uh, five thousand people in Riverside Park with no mosquitoes, and uh, that's a pretty cool deal. So, um, okay, so, uh, but tell me, so you guys travel? You travel all the time. I have to know. Do you study up on what insects are in a particular area? I know you go to Hawaii and all over. It's I'm giving them a hard time. I always give them a hard time because it seems like. Just about every time I call over there, where's Michael? Always in Hawaii, always in, I don't know, Canada or somewhere. He's just never here. So you got to get out there. You got to see the world, Steve. I know. I big, want to. World. I want to see the world. Trust me, I really do. So one of these days. So do you do you study up on the insects before you travel? I don't. Oh. <laughs> did you want that to be a real long, elaborate answer? I really answer? did. No, no, that's fine. That's fine. So, um, so all right. So uh, we just got a few minutes left, so I have to know. Um. Once again, tell people how to get a hold of you first. Phone number two one four. So, I was about to give out my cell phone <laughs> number two one four three four zero six nine six nine. 
uh, inf- then you can email us at info at safehavenpest.com, which is also our website, safehavenpest.com. And if you're in Fort Worth, Denton, Argyle, Hearst, Julius, Bedford, Arlington. Tuscaloosa, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, that Abilene. Be, yes, that would be Mosquito <laughs> Detective. And you can get me on my website at mosquitodetective.com, or you can email me at dave at Mosquito Detective and our phone number. And I worked very hard to get this phone number oh, to, yes, for the tie-in. It's, it's a 469 prefix, but uh, it, it works everywhere, obviously. 469-657-8007. Wow. Okay. So, Michael I, and Dave both. So, I talked about my greatest fear, these brown recluses and stuff. So, I have to know, because you've dealt with a lot of pests, do any of them scary, like rats, squirrels, fire ants, uh, koala bears, and Rats will make you scre- scream like a little girl sometimes, you know. They'll come out and surprise you. I've, I've had a few little <laughs> situations so that I'm not real proud of. Uh, I got to tell you, bed bugs kind of give me the creeps. I, when I walk back, back to the truck and it's time to go home, I get a little concerned that I might be bringing them home. Wow. So, I bet. But, and it, they're so – they take over your life. I mean, they <sighs> are life-altering when you get bed bugs. So. I've had enough life-altering bugs, I think. Dave, got 30 seconds. Tell me about your scariest insect or pest fear. Pest fear, uh, probably uh, snakes. Uh, one time I um, was playing hide-and-seek when I was a kid, and I went and hid behind the propane tank, and when I squatted down, right next to me, arm's length, was a copperhead all coiled up. Oh, my gosh. Ever since then. And you lived to tell the tale. Yes, I did. All right. Well, you guys, uh, I'm glad y'all are live. Y'all are great service providers. Thanks for being Mosquito Steve authorized dealers. And I want to thank uh, Sheldon and Will again for great music and for Meg for finally getting it over to them. No, we couldn't do this without you. I mean, I'm telling you, she she was jumping and pushing buttons in there, saving our bacon. So anyways, I appreciate you guys listening. Stay safe out there. Try to do something nice for somebody this week. And if you have mosquito problems, don't forget about Mosquito Steve. Uh, go natural. All right. Thanks. Thanks.